Until fairly recently, it was thought that a baby's sex was determined by the mother's cells. Or at least, it was believed that the sex was determined by the male and female cells together. But we are given a different kind of information in the Quran where it is stated that masculinity or femininity is created out of the sperm poured forth into the womb. That he created pairs, male and female, out of a drop of sperm as it is poured forth. The improving disciplines of genetics and molecular biology have scientifically validated the accuracy of this information given by the Quran. And what do we see? It is now understood that sex is determined by sperm cells coming from the male and that the female has no role in this process. Chromosomes are the main elements in determining sex. Two of the 46 chromosomes that determine the structure of a human being are identified as the sex chromosomes. These two chromosomes are called XY in males and XX in females because the shapes of the chromosomes resemble these letters. The Y chromosome carries the genes that code for masculinity, while the X chromosome carries the genes that code for femininity. Formation of a new human being begins with the cross combination of one of these chromosomes which exist in males and females in pairs. In females, both components of the sex cell which divides into two during ovulation carry X chromosomes. The sex cell of a male, on the other hand, produces two different kinds of sperm. One that contains X chromosomes and the other Y chromosomes. If an X chromosome from the female unites with a sperm that contains an X chromosome, then the baby is female. If it unites with the sperm that contains a Y chromosome, the baby is male. In other words, a baby's sex is determined by which chromosome from the male unites with the female's ovum. None of this was known until the discovery of genetics in the 20th century. Indeed, in many cultures, it was believed that a baby's sex was determined by the female's body. That was why women were blamed when they gave birth to girls. However, 13 centuries before human genes were discovered, the Quran revealed information that denies this superstition and referred to the origin of sex being not with women, but with the semen coming from men. If we keep on examining the facts announced to us in the Quran about the formation of people, we again encounter some very important scientific miracles. When the sperm of the male unites with the ovum of the female, the essence of the baby to be born is formed. This single cell, known as the zygot in biology, will instantly start to reproduce by dividing and eventually become a piece of flesh. The zygot, however, does not spend its developmental period in a void. It clings to the uterus just like roots that are firmly fixed to the earth by their tendrils. Through this bond, the zygot can obtain the substances essential to its development from the mother's body. Here, at this point, a very significant miracle of the Quran is revealed. While referring to the zygot developing in the mother's womb, God uses the word alaq in the Quran. Recite, in the name of your Lord, who created man from Alak. Recite, and your Lord is the most generous. The meaning of the word Alak in Arabic is a thing that clings to some place. The word is literally used to describe leeches that cling to a body to suck blood. 
Certainly, it is not a coincidence that such an appropriate word is used for the ziggurat developing in the mother's womb. This proves once again that the Quran is a revelation from God, the Lord of all the worlds.